The Georgia State Election Board voted unanimously today to appoint three people to conduct a performance review of the election process in Fulton County. Some say it could ultimately result in a full-on takeover of the election operations in that predominantly Democratic county. And it's a key part of the Georgia's sweeping voting rights bill that was passed back in March that voting rights advocates have been sounding the alarm about for months now. According to the Associated Press, which first reported the news, the state board could eventually suspend the county board if it finds evidence county officials violated state election laws or rules three times since 2018 and have not fixed violations. It could also remove the county board if it finds that during at least two elections over two years, the board has shown nonfeasance, malfeasance, or gross negligence. Although this review could take several months to con conclude, the state board could ultimately appoint their own administrator and take over and oversee the election process in Fulton County. Voting rights groups Fair Fight Action has responded to the move with this statement, which reads in part, it is not surprising that Republican-controlled General Assembly has targeted Fulton County, Georgia's largest county and home to the greatest number of voters of color in the state. This takeover pro process may be just the first step in the General Assembly's anti-democratic attempt to impose partisan control of elections in certain jurisdictions. Joining me now to discuss is the CEO of the New Georgia Project, Inse Ufat. Inse, so you know, I know that this, you know, the, because of the way the bill is written, the moment that they requested this, re what lawmakers requested this review, they actually had to make this appointment of these three people. But this pushes yes. the ball further down the court. Is, is, you know, is it possible that the Georgia Board of Election could take over the administration of elections in Fulton County, which, should I remind my viewers, is mo where most of Atlanta is? You're asking, is it possible? I'm saying that not only is it possible, it's probable and really, really likely. Um, I think that they like to give the appearance of bipartisanship by having one Republican and one Democrat uh, who are, you know, serve on county board of elections. Uh, but the third person is uh, Brad Raffensperger's attorney. Brian Germany, um, and some of the people who, uh, the architects, if you will, um, and certainly the biggest boosters and champions of Georgia's anti-voting law, um, SB 202. This is a problem. This is not a drill. Um, we know exactly what they intend to do uh, by doing this performance review um, and appointing an administrator. Uh, I will remind your viewers, Charles, that uh, appointing Appointing an administrator uh, as a replacement for the will of the people is how we got the Flint water crisis. This is a problem. This is a naked power grab and an attempt to take over uh, elections in Georgia's largest county or the county with the largest number of black voters in the state of Georgia. And so just tell our viewers, what would an administrator have the power to do if they took over the Board of Elections in Fulton County, which is, again, Atlanta. I think, again, the real question is, what don't they have the power to do? In the absence of a county board of elections, so in the absence of elections commissioners who are supposed to oversee the integrity of the elections, who are supposed to write policy about how staff are trained and how they are deployed, uh, how elections are managed, that in place of all of that infrastructure and that accountability and that bipartisanship is one person uh, who makes decisions. So we're talking about um, absentee balloting and how that process is conducted. Uh, you know, there are parameters that are set by uh, the state statutes, by the state law, but again, how resources are deployed, how people are trained, how um, counties' elections are staffed, uh, the resources that go into 
registering voters, processing voter registration forms in enough time, uh, the resources that go into, oh, listening to challenges and determining which challenges are nuisance complaints, partisan attacks that are designed to encourage the government to purge folks off the rolls. Like, it is endless the number of the list of shenanigans that could occur uh, if this process is allowed to continue. We have to pass S1. We have to put an end to these shenanigans. Did Republicans in the Georgia State Legislature write this bill specifically because they knew what they might be able to find? Is, is this wording about malfeasance and, uh, uh, and nonfeasance and, you know, since specifically since uh, 2018 in two consecutive elections, it sounds so specific that it felt like they might have written it because they knew that they would be able to find the things that they were writing the law to find. Is that your, is that your understanding or your belief right. about this law? Uh, it is not my understanding because I know these jokes. And I'm wonder whether or not some of them can read, let alone write such um, what I will tell you is that it, what is much more likely um, is that this is a template that they were working from that was provided to them by national Republicans, uh, but as well as folks from the Heritage Foundation uh, and, and groups like the American Legislative Exchange Council. In fact, they've said as much that the 48 states out of 50 that have introduced uh, some version of this bill. Again, I, it is not a coincidence that the language is so similar in 47 or 47 out of 40, 48 out of our 50 states uh, that they are in fact working from a template. That's why the uh, bills were able to be introduced so quickly. And that's why their uh, naked attempts to grab power and attack the right to vote um, are so well written, so so uh, elegantly wordsmithed, because they didn't do it. So you you mentioned you know, that you know you, Georgia really needs the federal government to pass federal voter rights legislation. If that does 100%, not happen, absolutely. What are the other avenues? What are the other avenues? to fight back against this? Or are there any other avenues to fight back against this? I mean, I think that there are additional avenues to fight back against and just none of them are uh, as efficient uh, as passing a national standard uh, for uh, for how elections are conducted in all 50 states. Uh, I mean, obviously there is an opportunity to sue now that will provide its own set of challenges uh, given the makeup of the Supreme Court um, and many of the federal judges that have been appointed over the past four years, uh, many of them recognize sort of ideological uh, alignment with the former president. Um, and that could be really problematic when we start thinking about uh, these voting rights cases as they work their way through the courts. Um, I think that there is so an opportunity Opportunity to beat it back in these actual state legislatures where they've been introduced um, to go back, you know, when the Georgia legislative session starts again in January to try to um, get the law repealed. But again, we're talking about nearly every state in our union uh, with an anti-voting bill. And so it'd have to happen in Georgia, it'd have to happen in Florida, Texas, et cetera. Um, so yes, Charles, there are other ways to push back against this. It's just none of them are as, e as efficient as passing a federal standard for our elections. In Seufa, thank you so much for your time. I see that you're in Cancun. Enjoy it, but stay safe. There's a storm headed your way. We're going to be thinking about you. Your Black History Moment is next.